hello in this session we'll be discussing some key points in microsoft excel because microsoft excel is invariably used by most of the people in business and a lot of time when you get a data and that you would like to use in business analytics you will be getting the data in excel and you will be cleaning it and further using for processing in microsoft excel itself or use it for other program like r or spss or stata so quickly i will next 15 to 20 minutes i'll do a quick round of uh, some of the important functions in microsoft excel that i use to summarize the data uh, from business analytics and to clean the data and to organize the data so without wasting much time let's start the presentation so data preparation when you're dealing with data preparation as analyst when you're working with data you have to be aware is the data clean is the data complete what assumptions are you make making about the data and does the result when the after analysis when uh, you the results do they make sense you know how to check whether the results are uh, practical for me cleaning data is uh, very important so we look at is the data clean is the data complete and it takes clean data takes a lot of time and but it, it is very important because it influence the outcome of the analysis so before you go ahead with detailed business analytics we should plan enough time for basic data check so that the right data goes in and we get some meaningful output there are several type of checks one should look for like invalid values if you see some negative value when the values need to be positive when numeric data has to be there some text information is there some values are too big or too small we call them outliers or missing values then if the mismatch between data points in a rows and column so number of rows and number of columns that is again mismatch the some data is duplicated or not and sometimes the human makes the error by putting the wrong dates and putting the wrong assumptions so i always try to exclude the outlier that is most interesting and while you're working and cleaning the data you must make sure that you are versioning it properly and you keeping track of changes you are making to the original data so while on the first thing while i work in microsoft excel as we will be working on further sessions uh, we will be working on advanced functions and analysis add in so before that let's look at some of the key functions that i found useful while working in microsoft excel so let's start working on microsoft excel itself so first thing that i found very useful suppose this is a data one i have got from a painter paint shop and that paint shop is uh, producing it has multiple products and for each product version paint product version data is given about the production week processing time per gallon it is processing time is given in hours the raw material cost is given in dollars for the each product so if you want to see one quick thing is short key that i found useful is suppose you in the first column first row first column first cell and you want to see how many entries are there in the particular column then you press control and down key it will take you the last entry and then if you go back to the first entry in the particular column control up 
and you want to see what is the last entry in this particular row then control right it will take you the last entry in the particular row and then it will control left it will take you the first entry and if you want to see the if you if i want to select the all of all of the then i say control shift right arrow it will select all the and then i say control shift down it will select all the rows in this particular table so if i'm here and if i want to go to home then i say control home it will take me to the first cell in this particular table so that is about the short keys like control right key control up key up arrow control down arrow control left arrow control shift down arrow up arrow right arrow and the left arrow and control end and control home and control shift end and control shift home so these are short keys then now quickly other function that i found useful is sum if and this suppose i want to check the function is sum if and i select the whole a1 to a5 the whole of this is selected yeah the whole column is selected and i want to check for this particular product version number and in this particular what is the raw material cost so i want to sum the raw material cost only for this particular glide and 184 tl then i get this sum if and if i want to average it out the same thing i choose here average function i go to i choose this particular column the full column i want to see for this particular product version number and i want to average what is the average value of the raw material cost i select all this cost column and then i click i get for this particular product version number what is the average value for the raw material cost then i can say how many entries are there this i can also check how many in this particular table how many entries of glide and 184 tl product version number are there then i select the whole column and then i select e3 and i count if so immediately i'll know 12 times in this particular table 12 times there's a data about glide and 184 tl some product is other good uh, thing that i have found useful in some product so normally when we will put any function we will put equal to sign and then we try to put some and then we from the drop down we select the particular function and it gives you it gives you some normally when you put the function itself will be displayed and then microsoft excel try to help you to give you what are the next entries in that particular function so in this particular case i'm looking at some product i have this i want to multiply processing time per in hours per gallon into the raw material cost and then i'll add keep on adding them so it is like first it multiplies and then adds it so i select the both the array column number three which is array one and the column number four which is array four and then i press an entry and then it gives me if i keep on multiplying and adding them so total sum product comes out to be here next good information is uh, transpose and in transpose what i do is uh, if it will transpose will convert rows into column and suppose i am looking at the first i have to select suppose 1 2 3 4 5 and then i select this on the top left i put equal 
equal to transpose and then I select and then I press control shift enter key so you will see that this particular column entries has converted into the row so transpose means take making in a particular table taking the rows and then changing them to col column and then taking the column and putting them in rows now next is a pivot table so in pivot table is uh, we go to pivot insert and then insert pivot table it asks me to select a range so I select the range and it asks me whether I want to put pivot table in the next and it asks me whether I want to this data data model I don't select that then okay so immediately a new sheet is created so in the row I can select say product version number and then column I can select so you say immediately a pivot table is converted and it summarizes a table with 576 entries into table with 14 entries and it gives me so rows become the product and it automatically sums the production weeks sums the pro processing hours and sum of raw material so if I want to I can edit it always and then uh, there's option to get more tables more fields can be added more area sections can be added and besides some some options are available like you can do averages all as well so rather than some here it could be averages or some other mathematical function that option is also available in solver so that is a uh, useful information other good function that I found is a VLOOK random number generation so like for example in this particular data set we have a frequency distribution and cumulative distribution and then based on that probability of demand so I can generate a random number here and function to do that is RAND and then bracket open and close and when I click on it so every time you know I refresh it then this will give me a new value of the random number right so right now suppose it's 0 0.60 and the next time I refresh it the new random number is generated but the key thing I want to tell you is a VLOOKUP function and in this VLOOKUP function is uh, it looking up first entry in a VLOOKUP function is uh, it lookups this particular value is of my interest and it looks for this particular value here yeah. in this E4 to F8 and it looks up for it and it gives me and it returns me the particular value of my interest that is the value in the second column right so it could have been this could value could have been then I would have taken this complete table and give then this value of the third so here it say look for value C4 and it look for in the table E8 to F8 that is a range 
and it returns me the corresponding value for in the second column in this case if you look at 0.44 this 0.44 lies between 0.25 and oh it lies somewhere here yeah 0.24 lies here and and then it will give you the corresponding value in that second column which is 300 so 300 value comes here so that is uh, some the VLOOKUP function so these are the common uh, things that I found to be useful always like if you have some data you can figure out like some statistics like mean can be like average Tommy it's called average mean is average you can find suppose I want to find average for average processing time here here so I can So this is the average then I can always find median mode. then I can find variance and standard deviation So this sum of statistics can be easily found out like median there's a function median and then if I want to select this again then I choose the same range so you see median has come I can find mode Again, I can choose the range the mode has come as well and then I can choose the variance so this, oh, this is a sample I want to see sample It all normally whether you look in variance of the population variance of sample so let me say I want to look in variance of variance of population and then it select the first value and then I select the last value so it make, gives me the variance and then I can also choose standard deviation also say again standard deviation of population of the sample suppose I choose population and select the first value and then the last value the whole column is selected it trust me the standard deviation so you can see the summary statistics can be easily found out using functions in uh, Microsoft Excel so I think you will these are the function that I normally use to summarize the data and to better arrange the data that is further used in the descript that is further used in uh, predictive and prescriptive analytics I hope you find some of these functional and this information useful and we will be using often in my forthcoming sessions where we will be quickly working on these functions so I may not have the time to explain to you again. I hope you will find this information useful and use it in your business analytic work. Thank you very much.